And we are tracking the concerns about another deadly risk, enterovirus. It has spread from 12 to 20. 42 states in just three weeks. And now doctors are worried the virus is linked to the deaths of four patients, including a 10 year old Rhode Island girl. CBS News medical contributor Dr. Holly Phillips is here. Dr. Holly, good morning. Good morning, Nora. Okay, four patients who have died have tested positive for this enterovirus. Is it clear, though, that that virus played a role in their death? No, Nora, you know, it's not clear yet at all. Uh, in one of the, the deaths, the young girl in Rhode Island, right now her death is being attributed to a, actually a bacteria mm -hmm. called Staph aureus, which uh, caused sepsis in her blood, a very serious blood infection. Now, it could be that the enterovirus compromised her immune system that made her particularly vulnerable to this bacteria, and perhaps that's what happened in the other patients. It's just not clear now exactly how the two entities are linked. So why is it so hard to track it, Holly, and to test it? You know, Gail, that's a really good question, and there are a couple of reasons. The first is that enterovirus doesn't make everyone really sick. Some people might just have a little runny nose. Some people might not have any symptoms at all, so they don't end up at a doctor actually being tested and tracked. The other thing is that the test for enterovirus isn't just something that's routinely carried at a doctor's office, like a strep test, for instance. Mm -hmm. This is something that really goes through the Department of Health and not routinely tested for. So I think many cases can slip through the cracks. Are there special concerns for children? You, we're always concerned about children when it comes to infections because children actually come in much closer contact with each other than adults. You know, for instance, at school, they might hold hands, touch each other on the playground, they're more likely to share food, whereas adults in a workplace sort of keep a greater physical distance. That means kids are more likely to spread infection amongst each, each other. And you've got flu season, too, coming up. If so for parents, what should we be looking at? You know, Gail, if there ever was a year to get a flu shot, mm. this is it. Of course, I say that every I year. I was going to say, Holly, you said I the do. exact same thing last year, the I, year before that. I do, but right now, you know, we have so many sort of viral concerns circulating. <laughs> so we you can take the flu out of it. <laughs> I sort of, Charlie just made a little note on his note where he makes notes, flu shot. Exactly. There we I go. Exactly Dr. Dr. Holly's got some needles in the back. I'm going to Exactly. Call later. me after the show. I'll yeah. take care of you. Yeah. Uh, you're too observant. Thank you. Holly. We listen. We listen intently. Good we advice. Do Thank pay you. attention. And there are a lot of questions about Ebola as well. So as we know, we are, as you know, we're heading now to our Facebook page to answer questions for the next several minutes. If you want to get involved, just go to facebook.com slash CBS this morning. Holly, you'll be there answering questions. That's Very really thanks. helpful.